In this video, we're going to take a look at the Cisco Firepower Show coming up on IT Pro TV. Now, if you haven't heard of Firepower, it's a pretty exciting product, one that we're jazzed about. And I know I'm especially excited because we got a special guest in the studio to help us with this show. We've got uh, consultant, author, all around knowledgeable Cisco guy, Mr. Todd Lamley here. He's celebrating the release of his new book on Cisco SourceFire slash Firepower with advanced firesight management. It's quite the mouthful, but it is quite a good <laughs> read. Um, we've got Todd Lanley here in the studio. I know I'm excited. Todd, thank you for being with us. Fantastic. Great, great to be here. And we have the most exciting product that Cisco's released in years, right? So Cisco bought SourceFire a couple years ago and uh, you know, lots of money, right? And they've invested a lot of money. And we're going to see this product in pretty much their whole uh, their whole range from ISR routers. We certainly I, they have them on their ASAs now, where you, and that's where I work mostly with them. But they also have the appliances. But we're going to see this. On, they're going to pretty much push this out on all products because this is such a phenomenal security product. Uh, <clears throat> I want to say right now that I get excited about it. I want to make sure you understand I don't work for Cisco. I don't speak for Cisco, and they are not paying me. Boy, I wish they were, but they <laughs> are not. So I get excited about it. I do a lot of consulting. I do a lot of training with it. You know, I've got I've got other consulting jobs, but on the security front, this is the most exciting product I've seen in years, and it works phenomenal. Really, what it is, it's Snort, right? So we've got the power of Snort with an intuitive GUI on top. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at that, and I'll show you some of the power and what we're going to go through in our series here. So nonetheless, here we are looking at something called a Firesight Management Center, or also referred to as the Defense Center. And I refer to it as a lot as an old school guy. But the fact is, is we're looking at here, and, and this isn't really a great screen. You don't really want to see this screen at work because this is a lot of attacks that are occurring. So this is a demo, and basically it's saying, hey, we're attacking this constantly, right? These red lines are my attacks, blues my data. And and, you know, it more looked like, let me show you a, a real network that I'm working on here. It more looked like something like this, right? Our attacks, we don't have very many, and, and our ideas is, you know, something like this. In this case here, because we're doing a, a demo, we want to see a lot of attacks so we can play with it and see what's going on. In this case here, I'm going to come down here and I say, look, I've seen malware. And is, do you think malware is important today? I, I I don't think so, Todd. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm on a Mac, right? So I don't have malware problems, do I? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> but I did see you put in your credit card earlier so you can get your files back. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, it, it said I was encrypted. I didn't want that, right? Yeah. You, and <laughs> well, you know, what would? But don't you think the, you should have called the FBI? <laughs> well, you know, our taxpayer dollars do go to them to help us out of situations like that. Are are you uh, are you, are you hinting at the fact that they don't do that? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. I, I saw something in the, on the news the other day, and I was like, well, I find this fascinating. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the FBI thinks about malware. Or, I'm sorry, in malware. And what comes in malware? Something called ransomware. This is just a piece of it, isn't it? And in this ransomware, what is the FBI saying here? The FBI says, well, if, and if you read through the article, they say, well, if everyone just pays the ransom, the prices are coming down because so many people are paying it. And it's easier than trying to pay. It's less expensive. Than and send it out to a repair shop to try to get your files back. So, you know, he just paid his $89.95 and he got his files unlocked. We were sitting here. So, is malware important? Sure it is, because if this happened to you in your corporation, what do you, I mean, they could be charging hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, you know, just think about, it was what, just a few months ago that Sony Pictures yeah. got, got involved in this where mm -hmm. all of their machines got locked down. Yep. The whole company, the, the, the motion picture side of it, was basically out of business for weeks before they managed to recover from that. Imagine that happening to your company and the amount of money you would lose by having that offline. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if we could stop that before it even happened? And that's just a feature of this, and it's it's the best product for malware in the world. So viruses and Trojans certainly might be a problem, but they're nothing compared to what malware can give us. And malware comes in very small packages. And so, I mean, they can be on apps. They can, they're very, very small. I've seen some really small ones I was looking at the other day. But nonetheless, so we can come here and we can see malware. And uh, let me go right to a screen that shows uh, some some malware here. I think I put it, where did I put it? Right here. And this is showing on this demo screen. Again, if your work looks like this, you guys got a problem. But nonetheless, I can come in here and say, here's my malware. And, and, and 
and again, we're determining the file disposition through this product by sending it to something called an AMP cloud, Advanced Malware Protection Cloud at Cisco. And they basically give us a file disposition and they came back and said, hey, this is bad, right? And they're telling us this file came back with a high threat score. So we'll go ahead and click on this. And now when we see this file and, and what this product will give us is what's called a trajectory. In other words, when it got into your network, where did it go? So, I mean, this is just one of the features. I'm just scratching the surface on what we're gonna cover in this, in our episodes, right? And this is gonna show me, you know, where it's gone, you know, who it talked to. And, you know, uh, the, the other thing that gives me is, uh, uh, I'm not gonna go through that right now, but I, I do this in the, I'll do this in the episodes. And the fact is, is we'll look at the threat score and the report on it that came from what's called Talos, right, the sandbox. Nonetheless, I can also download the file, right, so we can use it in our own sandbox and so on and stuff like that. But let's go back here and I keep more of a big picture. But the idea was is malware is a serious issue. This is a very serious product, and, and can other companies do a lot of this? The other companies can, and, and, and again, I'm not going to pick on other companies like you got Palo Alto and McAfee, and a lot of people use these in their fine products. That's not what makes that this one sing above them. What makes them this product sing above your other products, and I'll pick on Palo Alto in this case, poor Palo Alto, <laughs> uh, because I go out to a lot of companies that are like, why should I buy this over Palo Alto? Because that's what about we were about to buy. And I'll show them why, because you've got like at least nine administrative interfaces with Palo Alto to do the same thing that we're doing here. And it can't do it quite as well. Not only that, you don't have any correlation between events. So now we have this single interface, this phenomenal intuitive GUI that can help us use our snort rules to our advantage, stop malware, do URL filtering, you know, and create lots more uh, security all on one screen with correlation between events. You got SEM reporting, that's a pretty big deal, right? So we've got all this stuff that can occur with this one piece of management. And so again, if you're looking at other products, say, hey, I wanna see one administrative interface for all of these. I don't want the siloed approach where I have, you know, um, uh, appliance, 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 VPN, concentrators, router switches, and all this. In this case here, we've got our ASA. You can have an appliance as well, but the ASA is a phenomenal product to run this on. Uh, and uh, what it does is it, it gives us our routing, switching, VPN, and, and all that other stuff that we all know that an ASA does. But now we have the power, or what we call firepower, right? So firepower, the term is very important to understand here, Don, because it's used a couple different ways. This was created by SourceFire before Cisco Bottom and firepower came out. And it really defines the power of the next generation IPS, next generation firewall. And it just sounds cool as a marketing term, right? It, it does. <laughs> and so I, I don't show it here, but the firepower, uh, the, where the power is all capitalized, I think you're going to see that going away. So now that Cisco's got it, when you run in an ASA with this product on it, the actual term they call it is firepower module. Right, and is that the case? Uh, I don't know, you know, I, I guess, you know, so it's really hard for me to define all these terms. They seem to change a lot. Because I was writing the book, I kind of just gave up and says, I'm gonna call the Firesight Management Center the Defense Center and just kind of stick with it. But th there's also another term called Firesight. This is a very powerful technology. So we see things like Firepower, Firesight, and they had a technological uh, uh, definition and now they're kind of a lot of marketing so you actually probably saw it said firepower with fireside administration right what does that mean with the the firepower again is our our power of the next generation IPS and the firesight is a it's actually a passive technology that you know scans our networks and gathers information about users hosts and data and it's it's in it, applications it's a very powerful tool I love firesight and so we will go in that in depth into these series right in firesight and how firepower Power works and all that. Let's take a little bit more. We won't spend a lot more time in taking your time, but I want you guys to understand how great this product actually is and what it can do for your corporation. And now there's yet another term. So we've got, well, source fire, right? And that term is pretty much going away. We see it still a lot, but it's going to be just Cisco, right? And then we've got firepower. Uh, and that's the power, again, as I mentioned, of the next generation IPS, next generation firewall. It runs on our managed devices and our defense center. Remember, our managed devices are an ASA with firepower. They are a, an appliance that's running this. Uh, and then we all we get all our events and correlation back at the 
Defense Center, the Fire Site Management Center, the GUI I've showed you. There's another term called Fire Sight. And what this is is a, pow, uh, a, a passive technology that runs in the background, gathering information on host users and applications. And it connects to our LDAP. And so now we can, so basically, we can put a name and a user to an IP address of an event. Very cool, powerful technology. And we'll spend a lot of time on that when we go through the, the episodes. Um, that being said, there's a, yet another term, right? Fire AMP. And who knows where these terms are going to end up. But the fact is, Fire AMP stands advanced malware protection. There's two types there's a network based and a host based. And we'll talk about that during the episodes as well. Malware is a big piece of this, right? And uh, it is a separate license, right? Everything's separate. Cisco figured out this hey, we're not going to just buy this product and give me this license forever. We want you to pay for us every year, right? Or every three years. So, no, let's just go back and take a look at the power of the you know correlating events and putting everything together in one nice intuitive GUI, right? I'm going to come down here. These are our top 15 attacked hosts, so we can get right there. And you know, I can go here and let's say that I see this host and I know it's a problem. I can blacklist it from here. I can just right-click, blacklist, boom, done, right? Uh, stuff like that adds things to what's called security intelligence. I have my whitelist, I have my blacklist, and I basically can add and take things out of there and 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 make my network safer. So help me stop a zero-day attack. Now, speaking of zero-day attacks. This is called an indication of compromise. This was the first known product uh, a couple years ago where an attack uh, occurred, a zero-day attack occurred, and these indications of compromise are telling me something changed on hosts. So we kind of benchmark these hosts and understand what's going on, and Fireside's paying attention, and then all of a sudden something changes, and we're seeing this pop, 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 pop of these indications of compromise. It kind of looks something like this, which is pretty scary. And the fact is, is then we were able to just go over there and blacklist the source and stop that zero-day attack. It was the first recorded stop of a zero-day attack right away. And it's, I'm sure it's happening more now, but it was very kind of cool. Anyways, um, so nonetheless, we can look at malware and I can drill down in here. Notice I can drill down to analysis on here. I can, I can go look at it and find out the host and information. All right, now Tom, that's all some pretty impressive stuff. And I know we talked before the show a little bit, when something's impressive and complex, it's not normally designed for small environments. And so who's really the target audience for the product and who's the target audience for the show, right? Like what kind of person and what kind of company would be deploying this? Yeah, and that's a great question, and this is what Cisco was able to take that SourceFire was not able to do, and put this on even down to their Soho products. You know, like the smallest ASA of 5506X. That's the, the the lowest model you can get, which is it rel really relatively inexpensive. But again, that would be real Soho, small office, home office, maybe a dozen users, right? Something like with this on here. You got to remember, this is going to add overhead to your network. But we can go all the way up through the 5585s and get some serious power. And if you need more throughput and more power, now we can go from Soho all the way to the most advanced data centers in the world. Excellent. So if you find yourself in that environment, you're working for a company, you know, a, a small, medium, large business, small business, you can pull it off with the 5506s. That's really branch office kind of side where we'd see yeah, that. So Yeah, maybe a 5512 or, you know, 5515 or 25 or something like that. Again, I, I was just making an analogy that, hey, you can go all the way down and it is going to be running on routers, right? Or RSI mm -hmm. routers we mentioned. And, and it goes all the way up too. Like they've got the Absolutely. dedicated appliance. I yeah. can't remember the model number for it, but the, it's going to... Those are their 3D models there. Yeah, so just add an extra couple zeros to your PO and you can, <laughs> you can have that too. Yeah, so it can handle very powerful networks and give you a level of security you couldn't necessarily achieve before. Now, if that sounds exciting to you, it should. It's really cool very stuff. Very cool stuff. And you're in the right place, so stay tuned. We've got Firepower episodes coming up where we'll get a chance to see all of this in action and how you can use it in your environment. If it doesn't sound right for you, no big deal there. We've got plenty of other content in the course library. Be sure to check that out. But if you're looking for Firepower, stay tuned. It's coming up next. Mm -hmm.